Good morning. Let me turn the roll around. So if you're joining us on Facebook Live, you didn't realize that I got it. It just came on. That is my birthday. So tomorrow is my birthday, October 11th. And uh, 10, 11, 67 is always rhyme for me. And birthdays are an interesting thing. I always loved them as a kid because there was a kind of a rule in our household. And I was really good at following this rule. Every birthday, we were allowed to pick a restaurant of our choice. And I don't know if some of you are going to say, I don't even know what you're talking about. But for many of us, if we grew up around here and lived here long enough, we remember that every Friday in the Tampa Tribune came the Friday Extra. And it was a separate little paper that would come out, and it would list all the activities, all the happenings that were going on in Tampa, and all the cool restaurants. And I can remember getting ready for October the 11th to come, and I would go through the Friday Extra, and we'd find the the Aero Squadron out of Clearwater. We'd go to Brewmasters in Tampa. Or I'd find some weird, wacky place that we, we only went once, but we would go on my birthday. And never missed getting a gift. Never once did I have one of those birthdays where it went by and nobody said anything to me. Um, at school, my students were always super. My principal on Friday, she's out of town tomorrow, but she's already made green cake, which we ate this morning. And brought me lunch and did all that. So I'm always taking care of my birthday. And when I was getting ready to preach, it's kind of hard to preach on your birthday. What I am going to preach, you know. Well, preach about me. Happy birthday to me. And so I did. One, two, three. Happy birthday to me. And I want you to understand why I sang that song with the scriptures that we're going to have today. One, two, three. Happy birthday to me. And there is a reason. And I'm telling you, if you're not happy to have one more year. There's a reason to be happy. If this year you were going through COVID in the middle of your birthday and nobody celebrated it, there's still a reason to celebrate it. If you, no one calls you on your birthday, you still have a reason to understand biblically why it's still a special day for you. And I want to give you three reasons because I'm here to tell you not everybody has a Pastor Randy birthday. I know that. I'm not... Uh, naive enough to say, well, everybody's is balloons and cheers. No, some people don't want another birthday. Some people look back at all their birthdays and, and, and think about lost memories or times where they didn't have, it wasn't a good thought to them. And you get to a point where you don't want another candle on that, on that cake because it caused a fire hazard, right? You got a hundred of them or 120, whatever. Oldest guy in the, living on the earth they had in the other day, he's right close to 120. I hate to tell him biblically, you ain't got much more to go, Mike, that's what I said. Poor guy, you might have celebrated the last. But they're not always the same if we think about them with the flesh. If we start thinking about this instead of Jesus Christ in our lives. Three reasons why happy birthday to me, one, two, three. One, because life is a blessing. And some of you right now are going, not in my life. Pastor, you don't know what I've been getting. You know, walk in my shoes. It says in the Bible this, in Psalm 139 and 14, in the NIV, it says exactly like this. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Growing up with Caleb at the time, now George, as he transfers into that state when he was in high school, this is one of the scriptures we made sure he understood. Well, he doesn't act like all the other kids. I don't care. He's fearfully and wonderfully made. He doesn't speak like everybody else. He doesn't respond like everybody else. He's got little quirks. He runs around. And he goes, oh, all these things. He is fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Listen, every one of you, on that day when you came into this life and onto this earth, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You don't, we say it all the time. You've heard people say it in the past. God didn't make no junk, right? None of you. Not, and I know, let me, let me, let me jump on some things here for a second. If you don't feel like you're wonderfully and fearfully made, that's a feeling. If you don't understand you're fearfully and wonderfully made, I know for some people they can't grasp that. They can't fathom that. I'm not here to try to get you through that today, but here's what I'm telling you. The fact is, biblically, that God fearfully and wonderfully made you. That's a fact, Jack. That is as real as you're going to take it. God looked out at his creation from the beginning of time before he even sent his son. We always start out this thing at Jesus. Listen, it was way before that. 
And he had a plan and he created us. And listen, he never stopped. People will be born today. Tomorrow, somebody's going to be born on our birthday tomorrow. I have four people at school I know that came up to me on Friday. And we all have the birthdays the same tomorrow. I know. Rick Edgman, who's not here, uh, a friend of mine who used to teach and work with me, born on the same day. We're all born on the same day. And guess what? God in his authority and power created all of them. All of us. Every one of you. I want you to realize today, if you leave out of here, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that is a blessing. We ask for blessings. I need a blessing, Lord. I need it financially. I need it physically. I need it mentally. I need it emotionally. Whatever it is. He blessed you from the beginning. I need you to understand that because the world has lied to us. The this great deceiver, the great deception has told you that you're not. It breaks my heart to see young people that don't see their worth or they, they feel defeated. Just because of who they are, where they live, how they dress, or the plight that they're going through. And that's not the truth. That God's honest truth is that you're fearfully wonderfully made. And we should be praising that. That's why I celebrate my birthday, is because God made me. Mom, you had a lot of work in there, but God made me. Second one, one, two, three. One reason we need to understand life is brief. Some of you want it briefer than others. There are people that go, man, I can't wait. How many of you can't wait for Jesus to come? I, I'm all right. I cannot wait. Let it be this afternoon. You know, see, we got his concert in boom. We're going away, right? So, uh, take that picture and that memory went for all eternity. That's what we did. But listen, your life is truly brief. It, when you go to history class and they start talking about histories and periods and epochs and all these eras and all these things we have to go all the way back, when you look at these things, they are length of times. You only have a portion of that. If you think about it truly and about the life that you live and the, the life that you live to affect other people's lives, there's a time when you're a child and everybody's just taking care of you. Then there's all of a sudden there's a time at the other end where everybody's taking care of you again. And there's that short, brief time in the middle that God really wants you to be who he created you to be and asked you to be. And it says in James 4 and 14, why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Poof. Now you say, why do you celebrate that? Whatever bad thing I'm going through right now ain't going to be for eternity. Every person that Elmer and, and Eddie prayed for on Tuesday night, all of our sick brothers, listen, they're not going to be sick for all eternity. The, the struggles that we're dealing with, the loss that we're dealing with, the, the depression that you're dealing with, the anxiety that overtakes you, none of that is planned for you for all eternity. He says, for a short while, I need you to go through this. And that's only if you understand that he's got you here for a brief moment. So whatever you're dealing with is not going to go for long. We hear that uh, phrase all the time, this too shall pass. There are many of you that deal with that very well. Most of us can't. Because before the first thing passed, the next thing happens. And the next thing happens. And the next thing happens. We go through a pandemic. And then we go through all this. And then the next thing. And it seems like it never is never ending. The never ending story. One of my favorite shows of all time. But the truth of it is, God's here to tell you this. It's only for a short while. One of the things that instilled, well, the military instilled in me. And I do it all the time. I won't ever. I can do that for this amount of time. This is going to be really, really bad, and you're not going to like it, and it's going to be tough. But it's only for a brief. And I, as long as you think, Kimberly, I'll tell you. I told you last week. If I have to read, I'm going to tell you how long it's going to be. I'm going to look ahead. How long do I have to suffer through reading? If someone says you're going to do this, I, I will immediately ask, how long is it going to be? Because I want to know how long I can set my mind to it. God gave us this understanding. And Mike and I talk about it all the time. Biblically, he did say 120 years, right? That's the max. And so we have a number in our head. Most of you can look at your health right now and come up with a number. You can go to your insurance company and say, they got a number for you too. God 
didn't say, listen, I'm going to put them on this earth so they can just suffer and suffer and suffer. I think about the brief understanding of life. We don't often preach it or teach it or say it, but Jesus came on this earth and did all he could in about 33 years. You say, well, his ministry was short. I argue that one because he ministered from the time he reached step foot on this earth. He ministered as the hope of the Messiah. When they stood there in front of those wise men and those, those shepherds and they, they knew who he was immediately, he was ministering to them. His ministry began there. His actual teachings weren't very long. But as a child, and he started preaching at 13. And then all of a sudden, what did he do for the next about 10 years or 20 years? He just was the perfect example of how we're supposed to live on this earth. 33 years. Brief, but effective and powerful. Why? Because he knew and was created to be perfect. And he was God's son. And listen, you are created fearfully and wonderfully made. And you're here for a short time. So every year that I have a birthday is another opportunity to realize I've got a little more time. This is not the end. We hear it in funerals all the time about the dash. Between the time you were born and what you do with that dash. I'm telling you what a birthday does is it extends that dash ever a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And a little bit longer. My point is I have to reflect on my life. Am I honoring and being who he created me to be? Am I being fearfully and wonderfully made? Am I showing the world that? I get cards and all these things that say, we look at your life and everything. And listen, that's wonderful. But at the end of the night, I have to go to bed with myself. I have to close my eyes and be okay with who I am. I will always do what God's called me to do. And... I will do what I can to help other people. But I'm going to do what he says first. Always. And when I answer to somebody, thankful to all the, the, the accolades and everything, but I answer to him. And he says, for a brief time, Pastor, I need you to be who I created you to be. Last but not least, one, two, three. Life is what God breathed. Mom, we do celebrate the fact that I was two weeks late and you had to carry me for a little bit longer there. I think you went out cutting hedges or something to see if I would come out. I hated doing that then and I hated doing it now. So that's the reason why I came out because I was trying to get away from it. <laughs> the truth of it is, moms, you carry these children. And it's not easy. The actual Bible tells us that's kind of a, a part of the fall right there. It's going to be pain in birth. And y'all know the pain. But before any of that ever took place, God breathed life into us. The Bible says in Genesis 2 and 7, when he created all things, the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. The living beings that we are, are is because God breathed into us. He resuscitated that which had, had no life. I'm CPR trained by our CPR all coaches and Athletic directors have to be CPR certified, and you go through that, and they talk about the breath of life and the compressions. One of the crazy things is they kind of moved away from the breath of life. But we don't talk about that anymore. It's really just the compressions. It used to be 15 and 2. Now it's keep a rhythm, and you try to do so many beats per minute. All of that stuff. And listen, because they realize you got to get the heart flowing. Listen, we would not have done anything if God had not breathed in life into us. Realizing where that came from. The DNA of God was poured into your lungs so that you could exist and be what was called a living being. Not an existing being. Not a just waiting your time till the day being. Not just coasting through being. But a living, God-breathing, God-fearing being. Earlier in Genesis, in the first chapter, where they talk about the creation, he says this to us. So God created man in what? His own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. I've often kind of looked at that scripture and said, what? Do we look like God? No. Not one of you looks like God. Why? Because there's so many differences between us. Which one of us gets to be God? Not me. 
Huh? Who wants to be look like God? DJ wants to look like DJ? Byron? Eduardo? No. When he says in the scripture, created man in his own image, that's the image of love, forgiveness, peace, strength, authority, all the perfections that make God God. He created us with those images implanted and instilled in us so that we can be an example of love. I don't see God. I see God's love through you. I didn't get grace. I see God's grace through you. We are to be the representation of him. That's the image of God. When we see a photo of someone, and it's their exact replica image because it's you know, photography, and we take it, we look at it, we will look at that picture, and from the face and from their, their, their physical cues, we can tell how they're doing. Man, they really look happy at that. Or they look sad. Or they look hurting. Listen, we live in a digital age where it's all over. You can see everything. Hey, my kid did the first this and that. And homecoming week. It's all, I mean, all these things. And we put those images on there so people can see what you're going through. But all of a sudden we lose the fact that we're supposed to be the image of God. No, 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 no. I, 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 you know, I don't want to be that to that person. I love when we choose who and who we're going to be the image of God to and who we're not going to be the image of God to. Or how about this? It's not even the who sometimes. Many people choose which day they're going to be the image of God. Sunday morning from about 8 in the morning till around noontime, there's a lot of images of God. You dress like he would want you to dress. I've been told that he had a dress requirement. Never read that, but people would tell me, you got to put tie, tie. No, not required. I will wear it at your funeral, but you, yeah. You'll never see it, but I'll wear it to honor you. So I'm going to wear something to honor you. Why would I not wear the image of God to honor him? I celebrate my birthday because he made me in his image, and I am thankful. I understand that this day and all of this and the songs and the plaque DJ that's awesome is only to do one thing. A birthday is a reminder of what is greatness. We can jump quick to John 3, 16. It's not on there. For God so loved the world that gives only begotten Son. His greatness. Every day that we rise up and get out of bed is because of his greatness and his mercy and his love. Every day that we have the opportunity, people say, I don't want to go to church. It's a great opportunity to come into his house and tell him, you're an awesome God. And you saved me from myself. And I will walk in the image that is you. Ephesians 2 and 10 says this to close the whole thing out. For we are God's workmanship. About a little over a year ago, I had this wild thought because I thought, I got time on my hands. So I'm going to become a workman myself. I'm going to buy me some tools just because I think it's cool to have tools in your garage. Even if you ever use them, you just buy them because they look cool sitting in your garage. I have sporting equipment in my garage. I'll never use that stuff, but just in case you come up and say, let's play lacrosse. I have to have a lacrosse thing, whatever, you know? We store up this stuff just in case. And so I decided about a year and a half ago, it's time to be a, a woodworking guy, just like Mr. Bob. To date, I've carved out two things. They came out okay. But they're not perfect. They're definitely not to Mr. Bob's level or skill. And I can't get to Bob's level or skill because I don't continue to do that. It's something I did once or twice and I just kind of let it go. Let me hear to tell you today. Those that tell you that God just created things and let it go is not true. That's a wrong type of theology and a wrong belief. God is still creating and perfecting his workmanship. He constantly does it. And it's beautiful. Created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. Works don't get you to heaven, but works are what required to do while you're here. Working at a job doesn't make you rich. It's the paycheck at the end that actually makes you rich. So we have to say, what is our payday? Our payday came in the fact that Jesus Christ died for you. You're working off a debt that you'll never be able to pay. I love in the old movies like in um, that one. 
with the Ingalls. Little House on the Prairie. Little House on the Prairie. And you would go into the store and you would get a little, you know, like a debt, right? I need some stuff and I'll work it off. But back in the day, they used to allow that. They don't do, you're not in places. Go into a grocery store and get a bucket full or a basket full and tell them, you'll work it off later. They're not going to let you do that. God doesn't want you to work it off. God wants you to work because it's pleasing to him. And it's something that he would do because he's done it for us. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You don't even have to do any prep time. Dad can tell you, my prep time can take months, can't it, Dad? I'll come up with a project. It might take months before that project is done. I'm thinking and I'm planning it through. I don't have the luxury in my other job nowadays to have prep time. You just got to react time. Respond time. Jesus never reacted. He always responded. We learned this week in our study at home. Here's what I want you to know. Your birthday is to celebrate what God has done. Your birthday is a celebration of life given by the creator of all the universe. That's a pretty amazing thing. So this day as we celebrate my birthday and Samara's birthday or anybody else who has a birthday, we're celebrating the fact that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you this morning. Thank you for my birthday, Lord. I know you got one coming up, and I'll celebrate that. Today I just thank you. I thank you because you're a loving God. That you are the example and the definition of truth and of life. I thank you, Lord, this morning because I'll never, ever feel the sting of death. I'll never, ever, ever feel completely defeated by what this world will throw at me. Lord, I'm thankful today that I have a family and parents that sent me and took me to church. I'm thankful for this family that you call One Accord and started out as Hope Weaver and we all came together in your name. I am thankful, Lord. But most importantly this day, I'm thankful that you gave me life. Now I just ask that you help me with it. In Jesus' name. Amen.